Okay. Wow. Getting back to the Mackiness. I, I honestly haven't read up on this as much as I should have. Uh, Ken, you're the Mac Pro again. I still think Apple's going to discontinue the Mac Pro. I don't think they're going to do it in the next year or I mean, two. I mean, I, yeah, I don't want to. That's very depressing. So we need to. Let's <laughs> leave that dangerous talk. And, 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 uh, okay, getting off of the prophecy, which will be fulfilled in the year, <laughs> and, and getting on to the sandy bridgedness and, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, uh, what, what do you two Mac Proians uh, think about? What? This, think about what? Think about this, um, you know, rumor that they're going to be launching Sandy Bridge Mac Pros uh, and Mac Minis, that the, that the whole line is going to be going over to Sandy Bridge. Well, the last thing I heard, I thought the, they said the Mac Pro would have to have um, a custom CPU. That's what the last yeah, thing I thought too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, do you think they're going to do that, or do you think it's this is... The rumors are saying it's a custom CPU. I, I mean, here, let me, we can, that was the last I checked. I think I actually posted that on Twitter, too. Mm-hmm. So you think this is a pure rumor? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, as far as that goes, consider, considering that for, uh, compared to all the other Macs, the Mac Pros always had um, a different uh, CPU compared to the rest of the lines, so I would have thought that they would have carried on with that, even if it meant getting a custom one that I would have guessed. Yeah, Apple's next Mac Pro rumored to be uh, mountable with a custom CPU. Mm -hmm. And uh, here I'll post that in the, in the show notes so you can follow on it. Okay. Uh, it, well, if they're going to really do a custom CPU, that's going to be going back to the what the that they used to do. No, well, no, that's architectural stuff. Risk is risk. I mean, it, it, a custom CPU just doesn't mean changing the architecture. Um, we got to be clear about that. Um, it will look different in appearance. Wait, so it says that the forthcoming refresh of the Mac Pro will look different in appearance and include a mountable server model meant to replace the discontinued XR line. Now that's kind of neat. So they're getting more modular stuff. It's kind of like the, the, the philosophy with line. You know, fine, you want to make it a, a server? You can just buy this little extension pack. It'll integrate nicely, and bam, you have it. It sounds like that's what they have to do with the Mac Pro. You wanna, you wanna have a, a, a full-on server? Bam! Here's a here's a mountable server model. Um, you know, and this is the price. Now, according to the report, the new desktop will add the Thunderbolt I/O and make the transition to Sandy Bridge um, architecture with a unique CPU developed for Mac and not C in the PC. The updated Mac Pro is said to be significantly faster with the updated processor and good for enterprise. Now this is interesting. So they all are, they're getting rid of rack mount stuff. You know, they're getting rid of rack mounts, but they're definitely making things for enterprise, which I guess a, a lot of the customers that would be using these servers, that's interesting that the form factor of being rack mountable but I still think that's more efficient to do it right now. Anyway, so the good, uh, but we, it says that the Mac Pro will look different in appearance. So I'm curious now, are we changing the form factor? And then it says, let's see, while it remains unclear what exactly Apple's plans for a custom Mac Pro CPU would entail, Macanon speculates that Apple may receive early access to the Xeon E5 processor, report reiterated, uh, and Julia, our August timeline for refresh. That's that's intriguing. Rumors over, emerged over the weekend that Apple has developed an all new next generation Mac Pros and Mac Minis. That's now that's interesting. It was suggested that Apple would add Sandy Bridge and Thunderbolt and plans to launch the new Macs in August. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if they do that because it will... Well, the MacBook Air was themed to custom CPU for a while and then I think the rest of the market got either, was it the same model or, or, or an equivalent to it that Intel released for? Right. And uh, this will just be interesting because if they do this, it's it's... Uh, I think it gives credence to the Mac Pro dying. You know, it's like they'll say this is the Mac Pro, but ultimately they're just going to get rid of it. 
Uh, uh, then okay, if they change, if they change um, the style of form factor, I don't mind. Hey, I lived the whole Power Mac generation from the from the G three, the G four to. The you you want them to turn it back into a cube, don't you? <laughs> no, but I mean they they, they uh, I would I don't mind that as long as they don't kill. Um, they're high in line, which, which to me this looks extremely promising now. Oh, I don't mind. Oh, okay, fine. If you kill the current form factor and bury it, fine. That doesn't matter. But we have a, we do have a power Mac, a high end Mac that, and a server. That's fine. Okay. I'm I'm, I'm still full. Cool. Yeah, well, if they go with a modular design like this rumor states, I'm gonna rip them a new one if they don't. Uh, allow for third-party expansion of it because uh, if they're gonna go that no if they're, if they're, if they're gonna go that route and go like a real modular system like that then one of the options should be you know what I just want the bare bone with nothing in it and I'm gonna get everything else from someone else so that you know if for the person who's like I want a system you don't make Apple and I don't want to spend a bunch of money on parts I'm just going to rip out in Frankintosh. <laughs> well, let me just tell you, Apple, and every pro thing they've ever built always has expansion for stuff. Now, maybe not as much uh, and not as many slots as some other models, but they always do allow for it. And, or it wouldn't be pro, let's be honest. It, it, you could not call it pro if it were an all-in-one, totally controlled mod, because that does not define a pro, um, uh, at least in hardware and what they're expected to be able to use and get out of it. Well, and that's one of the reasons, like, I, I personally, I've, especially recently, you know, I, I've always thought Mac Pro was a bit of a misnomer, you know, because it's... Well, no, the early Mac, because I consider my machine uh, definitely a workstation from its architecture. I don't have the DDR3. This is fully buffered DIMMs with, with all the channels and everything you name. It. Now, this was the last of the true fully buffered DIMMs. And then it went DDR3 after this. That's the other thing. They better get the memory matching right in this one. Uh, oh, you mean instead of the fourth bank? Well, you know, I don't, it's, it's just. You can do different configurations for. for not everything is is it comes down to okay equal speed bandwidth channels, you know latency is is an issue. No, I, I I know it's it's just depending what you're doing that can be very important. Okay, so it sounds like y'all Mackians are looking forward to this, assuming these rumors are true. No, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, what would you call y'all? Should I call you uh, Church of Mackers? No, just uh, we as consumers. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Somehow oh, that just doesn't I'm, seem I'm, right. I'm a Mac fanboy, man. I'm a Mac fanboy. I, I didn't say... <laughs> Windows and Linux just can just go eat, eat mud. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because OS ten is the best. You know my Mac Pro? It, my Mac Pro is faster than my liquid cooled, you know, machine here, which is a piece of crap. And my and my brand new uh, custom build, it just, it just, you know, the Mac just steps all over. It's crushing. I don't even know why. I'm just an idiot for building my own machines. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't my Mac Pro differently. Does it run rings around my Dell? Considering that it's five years old, that's not my short content. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, on that, since you brought the liquid cooling up, if Apple really does this, do you think they bring liquid cooling back? Because Apple has been running you away. To, you don't need to. I, you know what? Air coolers have gotten so efficient, and also the way these chips um, are getting so worried about energy consumption that I like my next machine. My last, my last, this, this machine I just built is not liquid cooled. I just put a damn good. Um, air cooler on it. Yeah, I know. If you put a, if you put a good enough heat sink on, you're fine. Um, uh, although that, that that's something that actually has me annoyed. You know, they're green. We're green. It's like we're sun. It does less. It's green. That has got me fucking pissed off. I'm like, you know what? I'm all for more efficient. 
But that doesn't mean I don't necessarily want to buy the Energy Hog Guzzler. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like it's like Google's custom machines that they use for their server farms. You know, they they put these quasi things together to squeeze every bit of power out, which is fine. I have no problem with it. Um, but it, but it, you know, if they're doing it to save money down the road, that's great. I think that then then I'm all I'm all for that. But not some whimsical, magical land that we can be like Ewoks and live in trees. Yeah. But, that, but, that, but, but, but that, that's what's driving this. I mean, it, it, like, it, I mean, to get our complete. Doesn't that, doesn't that just sound so good? Let's just live in a tree and, and shit down. The tree. Okay? Let's just live in a tree and, and, and take a shit right down the trunk. And, uh, you know, I can, I can cool off the leaves of the branches and, and ass with them when I'm done with them and, and, and get full use. Out of it, see, because we've, we've got to conserve and be conscious of things, and then of and then of course, of course, the uh, fecal matter would become nitrogen and just become food for the tree, and, and thus comes the happy circle of life that we Ewoks enjoy. Uh, but you're producing methane. You're evil. <laughs> uh, uh, I am sorry. I can't smoke the hippy dippy green. I, I just can't. I, 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 my uncle is a geologist, so I, I'm, I'm actually pretty much involved in like litter, um, and, and um, unfortunately what a lot of other countries are doing to um, and forestation, um, they're, they're, they're not replanting, or, or they don't replace their lawn. For which you know, it doesn't make any sense. So, so there are some things I'm very big stickler on. I, well, no, no. I, I, I here's the thing. I, I'm, I, pro, I'm pro, I, if if you were to see some of my habits, you would swear I'm one of these hippy dippy green tree hugger yada yada people. But there's a difference between being green for the sake of being green, which is what this type of green we're poo pooing here. And like you said, live in the tree with the Ewoks. The Ewoks, man. The Ewoks. Like, you know. You can be pragmatic in our lives and not have to change uh, if you just do little things, you know. And, and, and there are things that are severe that actually are scientific, but. Why is it that the majority of the green movement is not based on science? But the majority of the green movement is based on the feeling of green. That's right, <laughs> based on motion. But then the other component of green is that it has become profitable. And therefore companies could give a shit whether or not the environment is X or Y. But hey, the money comes in, the money comes in, they make profit on it. And that's what I think, see like some, a lot of these local groups I think do a lot of good because they live next to it. They see some of the effects maybe that are happening, whether there's overfishing happening. I'll give you another local example. Too much, uh, too much pulling from water tables, causing sinkholes. You know, these, these are things that you worry about. Not, not carbon footprints for when the earth decides to wobble a little bit too close to the sun, and we call it global warming from Maine. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, what happens when they go the other way? I guess we're going to just... That somehow again, capitalists and capitalism will be the culprit bit, of, of bit, raising the earth or something. Bit. We you were, know? Don't you remember? In the 70s, we had global cooling. I know. And then when Hawaii starts sinking, of which it will. Uh, oh, no, no, bet, bet. It, it won't start to sink. A whole big chunk of it will just fall in the ocean. It does that all the well, time. Well, it's on hot track. I mean, it's on that hot track. You can see it right off the crest. I mean, but what, what, are, the, what, are, the, what are the green people going to do? Oh, too many hotels. It's too heavy. You know, some stupid little uh, thing uh, like you, that. You know, not, 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 not to belittle what happened to Japan recently, but it, it didn't take long. They did try and claim that the tectonic plate shifting had to do with man-made climate change. Oh my God! <laughs> they did. I'm like, no, uh, we have, uh, we have, you know, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> you know, George Bush uh, has a whole company that lives within the mantle of the Earth. You see, and uh, <laughs> they've got uh, they use they use nasty oil and diesel that move these massive hydraulics and, and just shut everything all over the damn place. You know, because after all, George Bush caused the 
tsunami for Indonesia too. You know, I, I'll never forget that. And then, the, and then the Muslims blamed, blamed Israel for the other tsunami. So, you know, we've got all this technology, uh, kind of, kind of like uh, Resident Evil, with the um, Umbrella Corporation, way down in the mantle. Except we're see, see, we're so sophisticated. We're, we're in the damn pure mantle magma shit. You know, we got badass technology. Yeah, yeah, you know what? Bit, don't take this the wrong way, but I wish humanity could influence the fundamental forces like the sun, the moon, Shit. the tides, and the tectonic shift. You know, because <laughs> then we could actually do something about these problems. <laughs> but I'm sorry, we can't. We're entirely up the whims of whatever the fuck nature decides to do, and we just have yep. to kind of fucking deal with it. You know, <laughs> it's like. <laughs> You know, but you know, another environmental group that I do like, they have a TV show, if they finally got one, is those uh, those people that save the whales in the international uh, waters there. Uh, that is is, is this eight. the one that plays Green Day? <laughs> well, no, but he left, he left Greenpeace. But here's my problem with that, is that, is that the United States, if you sign a treaty and you say something is protected, then fucking protect it. If you're not interested in protecting it, then take it off the books. I mean, I don't understand what's the wasting of saying, well, it's protected. Well, is it protected or not? Because I see, I see them as saying, well, hey, uh, we're enforcing an area, which is quite small versus where all the other, where, else, where it's free game to go hunt these damn uh, whales elsewhere, all over the gosh damn looks, except for this one thing. And that's, uh, if you're going to have a law, enforce it. Right? If you're going to protect a species, then do it. That's all I'm saying. Oh, that's politically <laughs> inconvenient. Mm -hmm. that, that's the problem that I have with it. It's, it's nothing more than governmental contradiction that people who themselves speak out against other environmental groups that actually take action and don't put pins on their shirts and... Uh, well, uh, okay. But there, there, there is a logic to that uh, bureaucracy. And that is, you lose your nonprofit status if you do anything. Well, they're doing something. They're not, they're not a nonprofit. He's not a nonprofit. I thought he was. Nope. So his boat and all that is not is not, is not considered a nonprofit. It's volunteer, but right. it's not, it, it does not have five hundred one c status. It's not tax exempt. That's interesting. Maybe that's a law that needs to change, huh? Well, you know, it's the basically you're not allowed to be political or violent. But basically, if you're a non-profit... Yeah, yeah, you're not political or violent, but let's talk about all the, the idiot um, environmental organizations that put metal spikes in trees and all that other shit. Um, but that's indirect. Oh, I see. It's, it's, it's that fine line. We're uh, pushing the envelope without uh, breaking it. Okay, let's talk about, what was it, who was it, the Sierra Club that was the 1994-1996 New Mexico wildfire that destroyed just acres and acres and acres? It was an accident. Ignored? No, they ignored geologists, real environmentalists, that said we need to thin the forests. Oh no, we can't thin it because we need to save this freaking bird. And if you thin the forest, which I don't think you even have a concept of what thinning is, um, oh, you're going to kill the bird. Well, because they didn't thin the damn forest, the whole, the whole forest with the birds went up in flames. That's that's the bullshit Ewok environmentalism at its finest. And then they 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 pat themselves on the shoulders, job well done, and then go home in a suburban. You know what? You, there's an episode of South Park. You need, have you seen the Save the Rainforest South Park? No. <laughs> <laughs> we have turned this into a political commentary. I, I mean, we went from absolute. I, 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 I am so guilty of doing shit like this. I, 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 I know. No, but like, but there, there, there was a South Park where, like, they, they were, they were. It was like it was. Uh, they were like some choirs. Like I think it was like getting gay with kids or something. <laughs> but they were like they went to South America and they were singing "Save the Rainforest" and all of this shit. And, but it's like they came to the conclusion, "Fuck the rainforest." And in the closing credits, they put true statistics 
You know, the rainforest kills blah people a year. <laughs> like they just, <laughs> I they just, they basically just went over the deep end. And I'm like, I, I, I went and looked all of these fucking. I'm like, these are all fucking true things. Shit. <laughs> Episode. Okay. Yeah. And, no, there are very real things that, that like my uncle would talk to me about, and he'd teach me about. Uh, uh, he would briefly would go over like like the bio, uh, bi- uh, yeah, biogenic pump stuff, and uh, the short talks that I've had with him uh, are very revealing. And. Uh, He'll he'll, he'll give me me a few pointers and then I go read. But but the conclusion I came to, and this may be arrogant on my part, but the conclusion I came to when it comes to the green movement is your green, if you analyze the science and do the exact opposite of what makes the most sense, you're part of the problem if you analyze the science and the science and you go, Hey, this makes sense mathematically, it saves me money, and it's good for the environment. If you do that path, then... I, then uh, I, I always view the Green Movement, and it may be an oversimplification, but I've attended many of these rallies firsthand to see and talk. Uh, it, it, the common thing that I get is that it's, it, it uses words like imperial mm-hmm. and corporations, and everything seems to be anti-cap, it's just anti-capitalism. At its finest. So well, I and, I, and I love the God. What was it? I I, I love the people who are like, yeah, I I I, I, I it, like they they won't like they're wearing a they're wearing, um, um, like wool that was grown in a country where like the uh, uh, animals are killed. By the thousands, yet they're mad at you for having leather. <laughs> it's like I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I know it's just I. I mean, because there is so much that we can contribute and can do. I mean, I, 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 there are many conservation things that we can do in our in our behavior that doesn't require some life changing event. You know, uh, um, recycling. I'm on, always on the fence on it because while well, the concept is awesome. It in practice is an extremely poor execution. It costs it costs us more resources to do it than what it should when it's supposed to be a self efficient. Well, no, it depends on the type of recycling you're doing. It I does. mean, but aluminum is very efficient to recycle. Yes. Uh, yes. Mo- mo- most most glass, most metals, very efficient to recycle. Some plastics, more trouble than it's worth. Correct. Um, Paper, it depends where you are. If you're somewhere with an abundance of water, paper makes sense. If you have a shortage of water... Most paper processing, you know, they have to be. I mean, like, my parents' town of Burnham, New Hampshire was based on a paper mill. Well, so, no, but what I mean is if there, there's areas that do a shitload of paper recycling that they're water poor, which means they're doing one of two things. They're either trucking the paper cross-country or they're using their already overtaxed water supply to process it locally, both of which are stupid as hell. You know, a more efficient use of that paper is ground it up into compost and put it back in the ground. You know, yeah. it's... <laughs> yeah, it doesn't dissolve as much as we thought it did. Since we're now finding that these, uh, it's not breaking down like we thought it would. What? Uh, a lot of these newspapers and paper elements. No, no. You, you, if you want paper to break down, especially with the inks we put in, you have to compost it in a very specific way. It does not naturally break down quickly, but if you compost it in a specific in a specific way with certain enzymes, it breaks down very efficiently. But you have to well, do it that way. That. You basically you have to put it in a digester. Yeah, but we're obviously not doing that in many regards. A lot of these... No, um, usually we're just saying, oh, that's paper, it biodegrades, and we just throw it in. No, you need to throw it in the in the bioprocessor, which uh, can also do some other useful things, and then you're getting nitrogen to put back in the soil, too. It's like... <laughs> uh, I could go on and on about the fact that fighting real environmentalism and the anti-capitalism movement. So. You know, we've gotten off of iWorld. Do we just want to change the topic? Well, we only have very few topics, is the thing. 
But we, how long have we been on an hour? So? We've been on an hour. Uh, oh, you, you didn't want to cover some of the stuff, so we skipped over. I mean, there wasn't, I mean, it's, you know, it's, there's not a lot going on with Apple till Lion comes out. You know? Well, they're talking about making a real TV this time. I read an article. Uh, but I don't know how, you know, how to true to form it is. Let's see. I've been so busy of late, too. Man. Yeah, see, Apple planning television set for 2012. Yeah, I believe it when I see it. That's what they're saying. That's what they're saying. Uh huh. And Apple had a TV you know, revolution. We should, we should ask um, our audience that that watches, and and, and and did we get to pay out the uh, prize to the? No, in, in fact, the in fact, um. It, Message the person who did that and ask them if they just like want PayPal or, or what they want. Because if they just want PayPal, rather than you send me and me send them, I'm gonna say you which, can. All right, tell me which show it was. Wait, that, hold hold that on, I'm gonna that. I'm gonna paste you the. This is the video. It's like, as you can see, there's only one person. Is that whole thing the link? You've got two HTTP. Yeah, yeah, just click the link part. <laughs> Let's see, which one was it? Um, <laughs> this, M, this M4KK393, okay, so he's the winner. Yeah. By default, because <laughs> like, you you said since we're not going to give benefit of the doubt to the other ones, so I'm like okay, so like. <laughs> that was what Mac versus PC or I will. That that was uh, PC versus Mac. I have half a mind to just give money out next year. <laughs> At random, you know, just go fuck it, free money day. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> so, what do you want me to ask him? Do you want a gift card, PayPal? Yeah, because if they just want PayPal, you, you it's it, there's no reason for you to send me and then send that because it's like then PayPal will eat extra fees. Yeah, it does. Well, that's cool. You know, we need to we need to do some more offerings and stuff. I, th this week has just sucked. I'm exhausted is my problem. You know, I'm just tired. <laughs> I, I haven't done the research I should. I, I, I was busy trying to mess with uh, four contracts this week. Uh, yeah, so I haven't fun. done anything, you know. Uh, the uh, You know, the other thing, I... I, I, I um, when we get off the show, we need to I, I want to brainstorm with you uh, on this. Uh, I, I, I do you follow this week in Linux? No, I didn't get a chance to watch it. I, well, I do watch your your show though, but I'm usually behind when I watch it. Uh, okay, uh, uh, I'm not uh, uh, Jordan, uh, uh, or AKA this week in Linux. Google yanked his ad account, so yeah, he's I mean, so he's I mean, lost his bad. he's lost his YouTube partnership, and he's basically fallen into the oblivion of. Automation basically going. We have automatically reviewed and determined our original no is still a no. So basically, Google has said fuck him. And I mean, he gets it, it gets like five thousand plus. Some of his videos have over thirty thousand views. He's not like a oh dear. Basically, he's just been. What's his, what, what's his handle on YouTube? This week in Linux. And he also does Twill Talks, but his partner account is This Week in Linux. It was before they yanked everything. This Week in Linux. Okay. And what was the reason given? 
Um, that, that, that uh, I think the words he used were that his account was generating improper activity. That was yeah, but hold on, I can t I can I can cite it verbatim because since we were going to talk about this, I I, I I I now I now have what Google sent him. After reviewing our records, we determined that your AdSense account poses a risk of generating invalid activity. Ba uh, there's suspicions about what's going on here, but basically... Does he have enemies? Yes, and that's one of the suspicions. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, well, who but, is this enemy? I mean, is he, is he really... Uh, I, I don't want to go into that while we're taping, but it, it's like, basically, this is one of those things where Google has done something bad, and um, I, I, and I, and I like the guy. He, 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 he actually, he basically spent the last year and a half pouring his heart into his channel, and Google just shifed, just shifed him in the back. Well, look at it from Google's point of view, because it does suck. I know another guy that... They, people started spamming stuff and creating problems, and I, I think it's so sad. I wish we could just all. I don't know, yeah, maybe. well, like, likewise, Jim. That's the that he's, the he's the second one that I've seen as well. Yeah, I, like well, it, 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 uh, um, so an idea that came about is that maybe all of us should just start, um, you know, just saying, "Hey, YouTube community, please call Google's." number and ask why they hate him you know like it's they like don't, they don't i'm sure some sort of spam went through and uh, well but if see if that's what it is they should review it rather than damning him to the automated fuck you um i think the thing is the problem with this this is this is proof that you know youtube's grown too big because now Google just oh, no, no, this is proof really, really that, that Google's too, Google's too big. Google tries to turn all of this stuff over to a computer algorithm, and I'm sorry, this is something where a human being needs to actually. It's got a lot of subscribers. Oh yeah, this is not this is not like a rinky dink little what the fuck channel. This I is mean, a, what, would, what would happen if this happened to like John for Lakers and stuff? You know, is this guy really opinionated or something or what? Uh, actually, he's pretty fair-handed overall. Hmm. Well, then why would he have enemies? Where is it? What? 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 Yeah, well, that baffles me too. I mean, he's a Linux fan, but he's not like a fan hard. Ah, uh, so what you're saying is somebody who's got an issue with Linux itself, then? Uh, it, 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 like I said, we're we shouldn't go into that while we're taping, but it, it's. Well, I'm gonna watch it. Let's. Uh, I'm gonna watch it. Anyway, it is an hour, so. You want yeah, to just stop so here? Taylor off here. Yeah. But uh, I, welcome I, I, to the i. You know, we did a Linux that had nothing to do with Linux, and now we've done an iWorld that has almost nothing to do with Apple. <laughs> now, join us next week for PC versus Mac, where we will, in no way, shape, or form, talk about technology. <laughs> Which I mean, really, uh, well. <laughs> If you listen to a lot of podcasts, it goes that way too with people that know each other. <laughs> we're, not, we're not doing anything. But, but you anyway. know uh, uh, yeah, one thing though, for those of you who bothered to watch the whole show, I, I would like feedback on the um, which you prefer, the less than par audio where you uh, can actually see all our reactions, or the if you if you prefer the basically turning it into an audio cast. Uh, like this uh, until we can get to the situation where we can fix the audio for the video. I will concede to whatever. I prefer the video element, but there's uh, people endlessly complain about the sound, and we probably have almost no sound glitches in this part. So, yeah, well, we'll see. Yes, <laughs> uh, I. You know what? You know what? I bet's gonna happen. Uh, I think Philip called it. The people who complained about the audio will be happy now, but now we'll get ten complaints about the video. <laughs> yeah, sure. I'm with that. <laughs> it's, like, it's almost a podcast at this point. It, it, it really, it really almost was. <laughs> All right, so we're signing off. Unless you want to go down another tangent. <laughs> no, no. Peace we're out, good. folks.